For you, this is what I'm hearing 
a, 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 a Peter say? What says he didn't? Have, I mean, did, did he have the character? Right? Let's look at it. Did he have the character to build this temple? Paul, at that moment, as you know it, did he have the character to build the temple? Well, well, I just know, I think I know one trait of him, or maybe two. One of them was he was a coward. Do you agree? Can cowards be the tabernacle for God? So, that disqualified him. We're talking about Peter, our uh, 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 pastor. Um, right, it says, another one, do we promise without even taking, taking the course is in the house of the Lord? Do we have a promise? How many people promise that this will happen next week? All of us, sometimes we look at your neighbor, maybe if I'm the one remaining without the end up, it becomes a problem. And you show you raise. Without even checking the course, this is what I'm hearing from Paul. And actually, I've got this same one. I wanted to do part one and part two. If I have time, I will do part one and part two. If not, please invite me to do number two. Right. Um, the other question that I have. We were asking, can we do evangelism? This is Paul as, 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 as asking in the presence of those of, 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 of the of, of Moses and Elijah. Can we do evangelism? Yeah, well, yes, we can, we can, we can. And down the line, the year is finished. Not even a single uh, objective or activity has been put in place. And what is looking? We are promising that Paul, uh, Peter, can we do evangelism? Oh, yes, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can do this, we do this. The year finishes and there's nothing done. Uh, do we understand that in that process we are gathering into the ranks of the enemy? By not doing anything, we are gathering into the ranks of the uh, enemy. Some people believe that the sin of commission is greater than the sin of commission. I've not seen it some anyway, but I believe the sin of commission is even greater. When you deliberately intend to omit something so that you are not held accountable, you are out of it, it becomes even worse. Have you ever, if you listen to the story of the of the, the Levites, was it the pastor, the Levites? Did I say pastor? What was it? Sorry? Yeah, for the good Samaritan, there was led by the Samaritan and the other one. I said, Pastor, what, what was it? Priest. That's the word that, that I was looking for. So, was there an act of commission for the two? So, how did God views that? No, because they did not touch him. They didn't even injure him. So, they were okay to go their way. Give a child. So, I looked at uh, uh, the characteristics of these people that he wanted to build the temple for. We have established that the temple is the dwelling place of God. So he wanted to build these three. And I looked at, 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 at Moses. But before I looked at Moses, I wanted to look at his mother. Who was Ma Ma Moses' mother, by the way? Let me talk about the new mother. Yeah. Tina, what is uh, Moses' mother? He's still thinking. Hey, 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 I'm not asking. Tell me. <laughs> Okay, we'll skip the past finders. Let's go to the other. Jacob. Jacob. Yes, that was the man. So what did she do? The, 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 the process is, let them kill all the male children. But says when she discovered that this, by faith, by the way, we're talking about faith in the morning. So when she discovered that the child that she was given to her was that promised child that was supposed to deliver Israel, she decided to defy the authority of the state. Would you be able to defy the authority of the state? Should even if your life is at stake. How I many are willing? We were talking about are we ready? The question we kept on asking that question. The question is are we ready? How many of us are willing to defy the authority of the state if it goes against their worship? There's one person that I've seen or oh, now we're ready. Sorry? Or you are going to raise and ask the question. That is great. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is, how many of us are willing to break the laws of the state if it goes against their religion? And I saw this pastor now, my brother. Thank you so much. Because this is what was what, that, what was wanted then. It is, 
required of us today. So that when the time comes, now they can take 55% of your money as tax. Don't swing the government, give it uh, the, the tax. This one I'm thinking to myself because sometimes you are busy calculating. If today the tax it becomes a 50% of your salary, you need to give it in. Right? Right, sister Abby. But when they start saying you cannot wash it on the supper, then there's a problem. Now you're allowed by God to challenge the government. Maybe I'm preaching here, someone is recording, and then the government will think. So you're preaching people to revolt. I'm not. I'm saying if the government defies God, I'm willing to defy the government. But if they ask for text, which is by the way, even the, the churches, they have to survive. They we, we return time. That's a form of text. The government can still ask for 70% of my salary. Even if it's going to be high, I still have to pay it. But the moment they defy God's slow, I have to report. Let's go down. He said, uh, John of Jacob, she faithfully improved the health opportunity to educate the child in the law of Jehovah. She knew that soon that time would be no more where she, where she would she could be able to influence the child to the use of uh, uh, to be of use to God. So we are given the opportunities as parents now. When we started we were very young uh, some of us I'm still fortunate I don't have white hair. Some of us now have started saying maybe Polish is working or die whatever it is. <laughs> we were young and we were these flourishing children but now they are growing up. They are no longer changed, they are grown. Are you seeing the gap that is being created as you are getting older? Now we are no longer in the producing age. There are some who are still going to make children, and I'm not barring you from making children. But what I'm saying, we are now in a position whereby we, we, we are almost getting to a dead root position where we cannot be of use to the kingdom. So when Jacob was raising Moses, she realized that it was a state that that environment is done with speed, with expedience, so that when the child moves, eh, by the way, when was she, when, when was Moses ready over? Twelve. If twelve Moses had already graduated with the masters in the Bible, it says even when they tried to teach him the traditions of, of the Pharaoh, he refused. It was because he was the son of, of the princess that he was not kicked out of the palace, but he refused. Because says there is one of the, the, the value that was supposed to be, the core value that was supposed to be taught to Moses was uh, uh, that he become a priest to the gods of, his, of, of Egypt. But Moses rejected that. And that he said, and what did he get that one from the mother? So if this responsibility was not passed by the mother, then that heaven that I'm talking about would have been dead. Today's parents were being given the same responsibility to build this temple. Sometimes we fool ourselves and say, I don't know, everything is right. The child grows and we are going to receive the action as they all now. I'm, I'm now afraid, I'm that position where I'm afraid I put a daughter at the end of, of the year. Whether now she's going to be hanging in the church or now she's going to be what I did not wish her to be. It's, it's a scary uh, 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 time. Brother, you know I just that? It's a scary, you have to scare your father now. <laughs> <laughs> it's that opportunity when you're asking whether what have I been done for the, been doing for the last 18 years, whether now it will tell for Christ or for the enemy. The tabernacle that we are building. So Moses, the mother of Moses, built this tabernacle. So now that's the one that Moses, uh, uh, Peter, when he sees, says, Let us build it for Moses. Where was Moses coming from? From heaven. Could, would my daughter be coming from heaven at any time? Will she be going to heaven rather? Because there's no one who's going to be going and coming back. We'll only be coming in the group, by the way, in case you miss that one. So it says, she endeavored to imbue his mind with the fear of God and the love of, of truth and justice and earnestly prayed that he might be preserved from every corrupting influence. She showed him the folly and sin of idolatry and the early taught him to bow down and pray to the living God, who alone could hear him and help him in every emergency. That, that's part of the prophet, page 43. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse uh, 24 to 26, says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to year, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God 
than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. It's for a, only for a season. But it's costing us a lifetime. It says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Everyone, if you are looking at the reward that is coming, even if you have not seen it, he has that faith that God was going to deliver. So to him, when he sold all those glitter accounts, whereby you are supposed to be the father, to him it was nothing. Of course, I know when most hated for it. God has never intended to deliver his people by force. God has never intended to deliver Israel, even to us today. Sometimes we use force. We use force. It has never been in God's intention to use force. It is a Jericho incident where you just round seven times and the whole fall. So that was Moses in, in, in a snippet. And then I also looked at, 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 at Elijah. I don't know Elijah's mother. Who has who is ever talked to me? No, no, who is the parents of Elijah? Anyone? Yeah, pass. Did Elijah have parents? Did Elijah have parents? But we're not told. I'm, I was trying to find out. Maybe Pastor is not hearing what I'm saying, so right. So, it says, Elijah was a man of faith and prayer whose fearless ministry was destined to check the rapid spread of apostasy in Israel. Far removed from any city of renown and occupying no high station in life, Elijah the Tishbite nevertheless uh, uh, entered upon his mission confident in God's purpose to prepare the, uh, the way before him and to give him abundant success. And while he came to the people as a, a, a proof of sin, his message offered the balm of Gilead to the sick, uh, sorry, sin sick souls of all who desire to be healed. Patras and Kings, page 119. So, as, as Christians, this is the, what, the character of, 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 of Elijah. So, have you met, according to what we do with the lesson in the morning, have you seen the characters of Christ in, in Elijah? He was not willing to bruise the, 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 the broken reed. He was protective. But when there was apostasy, he was sharp as a sword. That was like, I will have that. Um, was it man Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. I got a call uh, from a friend that has not called me. Actually, I was his apprentice when I was at home. He has never called me for a while. In, and now he calls me. And I'm, you know, have you ever been on the other hand and seen the call and you are eager to get this person and this person tries to polish you and give you the story and this story and you say, what's the point? Why are you calling me? <laughs> have you ever done that? You have not verbalized it, but you're saying, so, why are you calling me? So, this person took ah, so, how's home? How's everyone? No, okay, what do you want to ask? <laughs> that was me. And he tells me, ah, you see my son, you know, uh, uh, my first four years, I know he joined the Australian army. I already told you, is it the center of Afghanistan and they showed him? <laughs> and unfortunately, unfortunately, he delivers news. He is just died in a car accident. Oh. And, oh, so this is the news that he wanted to tell me. I realized that I wanted, I have to comfort him. The story for it is when I got there, Guys, if you are a Christian, always be armed. All of a sudden, I'm not even caring about every Bible. Fortunately, now the very phone ah, can you give me a small sermon? And then I'm like, okay, should I refuse? No. So I'm, I'm there, but the problem is now the prayer that they've already been offered. This young man has gone to heaven. God saw his life on earth and he loved it and his blood to me, put him as a flower in his head. Now I'm saying, I have to preach now, I have to preach against this way. That's how difficult it is. So, Elijah is one person who was not gonna bruise. But what was I supposed to do here? Leave that uh, 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 scenario like that and let people believe that a uh, uh, young man is going to heaven. Sorry? What was I supposed to do? Sorry? To preach the way that God gave me. So this is Elijah. When there was a post, he was not going to say, I ah, know. You see, yes, he's going to go to you. You tell what you know. You, you don't tell the other person, but you talk what you know. I decided I'm just going to pull those. 
with what I knew, but it was a difficult time. So it says, it was only by exercise of strong faith in the unfailing power of what is way that Elijah delivered his message. Had he not possessed implicit confidence in the one whom he said, he would never have appeared before her. On his way to Samaria, Elijah had passed by ever flowing streams, hills covered with virtue, and stately forests that seemed beyond the reach of drought. Part of the Kings 121. The fiat of heaven had come forth, and God's word could not fail. And at the peril of his life, Elijah fearlessly fulfilled his mission. Page 22. So, sometimes we look even in us while looking with the eyes of the world. How is it going to be 2030? 20, when, when, when I was growing up, we were talking about a, a, a year 2000, what was the year 2000, come year 2000. Does anyone recall? And then there was the Y2K. Yeah, someone said Y2K. When computers were changing, everything was very easy. You know, when computers were, you know, I don't even, up to there, I've never asked what that really was about. But anyway, it came. Then they came up 2020. Help, help for all by 2020. Now what's for 2020? Sorry? Maybe by then we should be on Mars, eh? But I saw it's very dry. It's very dry. Have you seen it? Sorry, did you see the picture? Yeah. It's very scary. Mars is even, you know, everywhere I see. Anyway, I wasn't intending to go there. But then, this is Elijah. I don't know his parents, but he is a man that Moses, uh, I mean, that uh, uh, Peter wants to build the temple for, for and befitting this soul. Because he's got the character of selfness. If it's now about God's character, I will stay and I can face a uh, harm. And he did. Comes and around and tells Elijah that. No true, no rain for how many years? Three or three and a half? I'll let you think about it. Right. Then the other one that I wanted to speak of, of is, is Christ himself. So, uh, Peter wants to build also for Christ. And the character of Christ, what was the character that can be fit God to stay in Christ or to live in Christ? What temple can be built or where can God dwell? It says, and only, I've just written a, 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 a small snippet here. Jesus was selfless, and only as we love God supremely, it is possible to love our neighbor, but impartially. Ellen uh, G. White, in his he says, The life of Christ was a life of humble simplicity, yet how infinitely exalted was his mission. Christ is our example in all things. Is Christ your example? Is Christ my example? Can I safely say I'm now fearless when it regards? Can I protect the other person? How many people have found people uh, quarreling and know that no? If I support the one that is telling the truth, I will lose friendship with the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Has that happened? And you decide to be mom. Hmm? One of the three monkeys sitting there. Is Right, so this is a situation that most of us are, but Christ was so loving, so tender. That's why as we were reading the lesson, I was saying, I, I didn't realize that this lesson or this lesson is going to make with the, 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 the Sabbath school lesson. And this has happened many times. One time I remember, you presented the Sabbath school, and the pastor was not there. And he came and he hammered exactly what we're talking about. So, there it is. God is saying, Christ was loving, he was tender, and so he befitted that temple that a, 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 a God can dwell in. So now I'm looking at now in our lives, maybe the three temple that I want us to talk about. The building as one word and his people. And the family as a family and as an individual. Are we those uh, temple that God can dwell in? If you look at the church, it says, I didn't know if you know which one to start. They say, uh, which one is the first, the egg or the chicken? I know you're going to ask as, as, as Christians, of course. But in the way, which one is the bread? Is the first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken. Sorry? The squid. There's confusion in the world. There's confusion. But we know as, as, as Christians that it was the chicken first. Let's not be confused. Anyway, 
I hope I'm not confused here. I started with the tabernacle, which is the church. It says in uh, Hebrews uh, 10, verse 24, it says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. You have to be provocative, right? Deliver. How many people think are provocative? Have you provoked them not? Yes. Have you provoked them not? I thought you said how many people think you are provocative. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, let's address that before I, I get to my question. Do you think I'm provocative? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to expand on that? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm speaking on the, in the sense of having a discussion with someone. You can ask a particular question or make a particular statement that you may not necessarily hold or believe in it. Like you want to direct the conversation in a particular way or to see the person's perspective and get a reaction. Thank you. So I say the positive provo provocation. I was now afraid maybe you say the negative one. Let's talk about the positive one. How many people think are provocative? Because here it says, eh, 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 and let us consider one another to provoke and to love and good works. If we are to build the tabernacle, this tabernacle to stay, we have to be in a position to provoke. One of the things that I heard this morning when I was listening to this, it says, uh, in a church, there's a board that faces you outside. And you are going out, that's where you can be able to read the report. When you come, it says, welcome to World SDA Church. When you leave, it says, now we are entering the mission field. You get the sense? As you are going out of the church, it says, now we are entering the mission field. But of course, let's not forget that even here, this is the mission field. Because you have to protect your brother, or you don't know what I'm suffering from. You need to be in a position to provoke me and to love. So, as we are building this tabernacle, the first one which is the church, we have to understand each other and have that feeling of rejoicing together and crying together and uplifting each other. And then, verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is what we're doing now. As the manner of some is, but exhorting the, uh, one another, and so much the more as you he, as he see the day approaching. The day is approaching. It's now apparent. I've always known the year of the locusts, 1942, when they say, all people were asked how old they were, until now the corona came, I understand there was Spanish flu, there was what, what, every hundred days there is a disease. I don't know, it's now a pattern. After this, another hundred days, another disease. After this, in a million years, another disease. Did you get what I said? You didn't get it. I said, they, okay, maybe let me rewind a bit. For a million years, there's been diseases every hundred years. Now, in a million years to come, there will be diseases every hundred years. Did you understand this? Anything wrong with what I said? What is it? Million years in existence of this earth. How old is this earth? 6,000 years. Thank you. I thought you were not going to catch that one. Right. Hebrews 26 says, For if we sin, sin willful after we have uh, received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice of the sin. I don't want to discuss this place because it perplexes me, but I, 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 yeah, let me leave it there. But a certain fearful looking of, of judgment and the indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Let's look at that. Then, uh, first Kings. Uh, 6 verse uh, 7 says, and the house when it was built, let me pause here, in case I'm missing out, I'm missing out. So, as we're building the tabernacle, let's remember Solomon's tabernacle. Does anyone recall what happened to Solomon in the tabernacle? Anything that can bring you to the message. How was it built? Yes. It was not It was not Thank you. What else? Jokers. There was a lot of gold used. What else? Timber. A lot of timber. Okay. What else? Dimensions are from gold. I'm not so sure of that one. Um, um, was it? Okay. Yes, uh, brand of it. Finest craftsmen were used. Let's talk about the, 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 the granite. How was it prepared? All the stones were prepared from the woods there, wherever the quarry was. When they were brought into building, no stone was cut on site. Beautiful. So don't ever think that after a year, then we will be polished in heaven. 
If we cannot polish ourselves now, let's forget about heaven. For the stones, when they were built, it, it can't brought into building. It was only a, a, a purified stone, ready and sized and put there. I don't know about the one that became chief cornerstone. It was made the whole chief in the run of stone that way until they found the best one. As Paul. Then it says, and the house where it was built in was built of some stone made red before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor egg nor any tool of iron head in the house while it was built in. So, the same applies for the heaven. This is the process, this is the tabernacle that was supposed to be polishing it. So that when we go to heaven, we are now ready to put it to this tabernacle. Where God came going, remember what is going to be doing around this people. At the moment, we, it seems yet, it's so far, yet so near is here, but it says Christ, or oh, rather my understanding, I could be wrong, rather correct me, that the headquarters heaven will change and become on the earth. That's what I'm, I'm believing. We'll be very honored. So, if we are to create this tabernacle, we need to create a tabernacle where God is willing to work in. And it's a willing, it's a tabernacle which has got compassion for the next person. Otherwise, if this one is size 20, does they not know the, they call the Kimbal brick? I don't know the names, but there's Kimbal and Goliath. What are they here in Australia for? I don't know the names. But then we know the bricks. So if the other one is big like this and the other one is small, they cannot be put together. They have to be shaped in such a way that they are sizable and they can be. I've never seen a pyramid go like this. Somehow they are very, very artistic anyway, they do it. But most of them, the things they go like this. Right? Now maybe it's with skin. Anyway, so are you a fitting stone in this church, in the building? Then also I looked at the family. Uh, this is this is the main workshop where the breaking and beating should take place. Where there's objections, where there's deliberations, where there's provocation and to laugh. Looking at your family, brother. Now your building breaks are gonna be someone else's bricks. You are great. Your bricks that you produce are going to build somebody's bricks so that if you decide to destroy their building, you can put, simply put your brick out. And that house comes from. This makes sense, isn't it? Let me swallow it. I'm saying, as a church, we as a family, as families, we have got bricks that we are building for the, uh, are producing for the bigger church. And for even other small interpenetries, you can pull your brick from that one and it will fall. Or you can put mortar there and that tabernacle will stand. Did it make sense? Did it? Think about it as a family. This one is not your sister, but now. Don't you like after her? No, I'm not your sister. She's your wife. It's a brick that was brought from someone to build your home. So if someone decides to pull it, your building it collapses. Does that make sense now? So these are the tabernacles that we're supposed to be building as a people. So that we know that as I stand, I'm strengthening the other tabernacles. And my tabernacle is strengthened from other people and we become a way. Does anyone know the ball meal? Ball meal. Does that? Like farming, uh, what well, not farming? A uh, mining. Are you a prospecting miner? Right. The ball mill is a machine that is a big drum. Some of them they put wedges for carrying whatever is inside. And then all of a sudden, when this thing is up there, it's still in a bucket inside and it's rolling. And then when it goes there by gravity, where does it go? Down. So with that velocity and that, it crashes whatever. And they put these uh, specialized thick balls inside. And then it turns, as it turns, it crashes whatever's inside into powder, fine powder. That's how some, some of the balls is processed. But have you ever seen the, the balls that crash the, the, the stone? Have you? You're still thinking. 
they basically disappear because as they are crashing themselves, they are losing part. If it's in a building, I used to work in a company that makes the, the cheap box. That part of the stone, they become part of the building. So as you lose your parts, they should be, those parts should be built in another building. So if you try to remain intact, you're not going to build anyone. You should be willing to sacrifice yourself in order to build another tabernacle. Right. Now talking of the last tabernacle, which one do you think will be the last tabernacle? According to now that I've spoken of the church and the family, which one do you think it will be? Individual, as a body, are you a dwelling place for God? Are you that person that God can say, I will be dwelling in there? Is God comfortable coming in you? Or when he comes in, can you imagine? As you are, as you, as you are looking uh, in that, uh, this uh, families where they make a father, you know, his father's shop, or where they sell while it's a dwelling place. You are going in, or even in a shop, you are going in, someone is coming out. Now, God wouldn't want as he goes in, they would say, ah, okay, I'm going out. I'll be coming back. Make sure you are finished by the time I come back. God is jealous. He wants to dwell on his own inside me. That's the table that God wants us to be. He says the body. What, what, <coughs> so, uh, you read um, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, and it says, What? No, no, you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. <coughs> Verse 6 to 18 it says, Free fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that commits fornication is sinned again is his own body. Then, second, in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Uh, verse 13 of that chapter is, okay, it says, Miss for the belly and the belly for meat, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but the Lord, and, but, sorry, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So the God, the God is considering us as his dwelling place and is asking us to prepare ourselves so that he can be able to dwell in us. So, Looking at this table, I thought we should look at ourselves as that individual that can empower the next person, and that person can empower the next person, and then together we can be that table that God is intended to be. I believe, of course, from the dimensions of the city four square, we are always seeing the city four square. Yes, it's a physical structure, but I believe that without the spiritual and uh, physical uh, uh, flesh, that structure will not be there. So if that structure to be prepared, that's why it says prepare God can just exist in the structure of state. But when, then why is Jesus Christ born so long? Why did he prepare this temple? If this temple can be fitted to dwell for God to dwell in, then the end will come. I hope as a church we're gonna consider the temple and build so that others can do it. Build that God can dwell in them as well. Build that I can make the other person comfortable to serve God. I'm not going to close the read that is already checked, but I'll find it and make the stand straight. Let us let, 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 let us pray. Let us pray. Our Father, our God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity and the privilege, Father, to stand before you and speak to us. That Father may be able to be a people that is waiting for a second coming. I pray that Father, we may be the tabernacles that can allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. And Father, that we may be tools and the essential Father that others can see your light and see your glory and want to praise you. Be with us now as we are going to be separating. And Father, as we are going to be during the week, working your way, please Father, allow us to enter the mission field with power and glory that you have given us. I pray God has been doing for the service of Christ. Amen. Amen.